I know like the more times that I, I called, the more times that I got rejected, the more times that people were being rude, the less of an effect it had on me. And so the more I was able to do it. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Driven. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing a topic we've all been through since we were young. And moving forward, that's something we're also going to continue having, mm -hmm. which is rejection. Yes. And, and I say that because, you know, growing up in school, mm -hmm. you know, when you're going to elementary, you're going to middle school, high school, yep. you know, you want to become friends with someone. Not everyone's going to like yep. you. Not everyone's going to want to be your friend. So you're going to have to deal with those rejections. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you want to be my friend? Nah, I don't want to. Um, and I know as you get older, relationships, yeah. uh, you know, you know, you want, you want to get a boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, becoming a relationship, you're going to have those no's. Right. And so I know both of us have been also in sales. Yeah. And we dealt with rejections. Yeah. Yep. And, and I know from like, uh, from your point of view, you were in sales too, no? Sales, just on the phone, over the phone. During that time, it was one of the first times that you were really getting into selling. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm pretty sure that was very new to you, no? So yeah, uh, I just just going back. Does do you think that uh, that's how it happens? How that's how you become friends? Like, hey, do you want to become friends? Like, the, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it goes. <laughs> like, when have you ever asked, hey, do you want to be my friend? It just naturally hmm, transitions. That's so. true. Okay. Because I'm like, huh? Like, if I was watching them, like, I've never had a friend like that. Uh, but uh, maybe but, relationships. Relationships, yeah, but I think even then, you know that it's gonna get to the point of okay, maybe like uh, we are gonna be boyfriend and girlfriend, so like that's when you make it official. Because I don't think you know, you just see someone and like, hey, you wanna be my girlfriend? Or, 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 it can. or some people, or maybe not even that, but it's just like dating. Let's call it dating. Uh huh. Or you know how people say shooting your shot? But then that's like, and and, and I think this is something we can get into because this is a, an interesting topic too. But uh, shooting your shot as in like, you know, asking them out, right? Asking them out or just even initiating the conversation. Because you know how some people just by barely okay. talking, they don't want to talk to you? Yeah, you could tell that, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, definitely. Um, and so I think, and I think that's one of the things that most people are scared is rejection. That's why, like, people don't, don't reach, you know, out to anyone. Like, whether it be relationships or, or even, like, um, uh, it, it's not going to make sense, but, like, um, uh, just be fear being rejected because it does hurt. Yeah, it stings. It, it like uh, it, it stings. But then that's one of the things that I learned in sales, is that yes, it's gonna sting. Like uh, and and I guess just going back to the the sales job that I had, it was uh with an attorney and it, pretty much we just received calls and our goal and purpose was to sell them uh the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at, yeah, at, at the beginning I was afraid to answer the call. Like mm -hmm. like they were calling and so when I was being an intern for like two weeks. I, I didn't want to answer and so when someone else was there um you know they answered but once i got i did get hired i know that i had to pretty much answer the phone call and and get them either to the office to sell them the service or sell them the service and then one of the disadvantages that i did have is that i did not know anything legal mm -hmm. so when they called about because it was a criminal defense attorney when they called i i had no idea i could not answer a lot of the questions so i feel like i was in a disadvantage because of that because most of the other people there they were at least paralegals or they mm. had some, or they were in school for, you know, criminal yeah. justice. And so um, when they asked about a question, like, I did not know. And so I think the fact that I did not know about that particular industry, that's what made it even more. Because when they called, oh, like, uh, I did this, 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 or like, you know, I don't know, what should I do? Or like, I, I honestly did not know what to say. I just said, you know what, you know, that's a great question. I feel like it would be better if you came to the office. Mm. And so that's what I used to do. And so I think also the fact that you don't have a lot of, like, uh, or the fact that I didn't have a lot of knowledge made, made it a lot, like you could say, more, let's just say worse. Um, but but I guess going back to the topic, I, I had to call, like there was a list of people that had called mm -hmm. and for whatever reason we missed or for example, that it, we there wasn't any like service that was sold to them. And so there was times where like, the, you know, there was no phone calls coming in. So I had to go back and call them. And so every time I called, obviously, like, you're going to go and, you know, pretty much sell. And so it was that fear of, like, you know, people hanging out, people being mm -hmm. rude. And, and there was those instances. instances. And so I called, you know, I said, you know, this is Juan from the ATM firm. And as soon as, you know, like, pretty much I, I said that, you know, hang up. Mm -hmm. And so it, it stinks because, like, the, you know, like, uh, uh, one, one of the things that I thought is, like, like, you're the one that called. I'm just calling you yep. back. And so and so I felt like, the f but, but I know it's not personal because I, I like, 
I receive a lot of like spam, yep. a lot of credit card offers, a lot of things like that. And so I don't want to like, I get called like 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to like mm-hmm. hear. And so I like, there's been times where I have hung up, like this is, you know, so and so. And, and so I have, have hung up. I have hung up. So I do understand that. But at the time when you're the one that's, you know, being, you could say, quote unquote, rejected, it does thing. Yep. But one of the things that I did learn is through time and the more things you do, you kind of almost become numb to it. Like you you expect it to be the case. You know, yep. you expect the worst case scenario. And, and if something you know better comes up, then, then that's definitely a, a huge plus. But I know like the more times that I, I called, the more times that I got rejected, the more times that people were being rude the less of an effect it had on me. And so the more I was able to do it. And so the, at, at least that was my experience with uh, rejections and how I handled it, and which is pretty much, you know, just numbers, mm-hmm. putting up those numbers uh, in, in that particular, like, job. Yep. And so that's how I handled it. Uh, and, and it's those things. Like, even even though, like, you know, let's say dozens of costs later, maybe 100 costs later, it, it's still kind of, like, I didn't like it, but I understood it, and it's just like it was like whatever now at that point. And so th- at least that's how I handled rejection. It's just by experiencing more of it, and it became less and less. Kind of mm-hmm. like with anything that you do, yep. the more you do it, you know, the easier it becomes. Yep. But I I know that you were also probably in a more sales position because I know like and and when I say that I feel like well in a different type, you were going door to door selling something that people really didn't ask for or need. But I know when. I encountered it, I'm like, wow, that's sur-. and I, I think it was a really good product, mm-hmm. personally, but I don't think people needed it. No. And so I know you went door to doors, and so I don't know if you could talk a little bit more of that and how you handled rejection, because that's a person and face-to-face, it's a little bit different than on, on the phone. Yeah. So uh, how then, how was that, and how did you handle the rejections that you had? I think, you know, to go into the beginning, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. I just saw a posting on Craigslist uh, back in mm. 2015, you yeah. know, like, uh, work here, $2,000 a month, and I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm just going to work here for a few months, get my uh, money to pay off my debt, and then, you know, just go back to a regular job. Uh, but when I first got in it, I, it was going to be a demonstration, selling vacuum oh i was selling vacuums at the time which Mm -hmm. was uh kirby those kirby vacuums it was two thousand dollar vacuums and then i go it goes back to kind of like what you said i don't think people wanted it or needed it i don't think they woke up that day Mm -hmm. and told themselves okay i'm gonna buy a two thousand dollar vacuum today but uh i mean they sold they sold and uh going in there i i I really you know like during the training it was just like normal but Mm -hmm. then when it came time to like go out in the field because what they used to do is you know take us in a van in a group Mm -hmm. And uh, we would start setting up appointments, and then we would start doing the demonstrations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that's how it went. And uh, starting out, it was for like a week, two weeks, like actually on the field. All I would do is watch someone else do it. Mm -hmm. And and I think that kind of like helped me get over that fear. Mm -hmm. Because just how how you mentioned that in the beginning, you didn't want to answer phone calls. I didn't want to talk to people. Yeah, so like I was mentioning... uh, in the beginning, I didn't want to talk to people. Mm. And so I was just watch them. And then, uh, but later, like, they just threw me in. Right. And uh, it, it was the same thing. Like, I remember I was nervous. I was stuttering. Good thing, like, the first few people, like, they were nice. Mm. So, like, they let me talk to them. Because, like, some people, like, after, they would just slam the door. Like, hey, here, you know, I'm uh, doing a survey. You know, like, we're doing a special offer where we're doing free carpet cleaning yep. to show the product. And then once, like we said, uh, to show the product, boom. They was they will start closing the door, and uh, yeah, like you mentioned, it does sting. But then one thing I think that happens, how you mentioned that you know the more you do it, like the 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 more the more experience you get, mm-hmm. I think you do become desensitized to yep. it, just like with anything. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you get desensitized from everything. I think it just becomes like it affects you less. I think you do get desensitized. Well, well, to that, yes. Yes, but to, to the not, nose. Not to everything. I think with enough time, you do. I, I, I disagree with that. I, I think you just, it affects you less. And and then I guess you could argue that that's des- desensitizing. But uh, I, I think I think more than anything, you just become desensitized. Because like mm-hmm. how you mentioned that, you, you do it over and over and over again to where you already expect that You already yep. expect those no's. Yep. So it's not like like the first time you're like, man, I want to get a yes. You know, like you're already expecting like it's not going to be so bad. But then you come to realize that it actually is bad. Right. It actually does thing. It mm-hmm. actually does hurt. Even though it's a complete stranger. Yep. You don't you don't like hearing those notes. You don't like hearing like not right now. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not interested. Or you don't like I had those few assholes here and there that just slammed the door. Yeah. I mean which, you know, I mean, they have all the right I mean not to be assholes, but it's the, you know, it's their home. Uh and I'm just, you know, 
yeah. is it called? In shooting? Yeah. No, no, definitely. I agree. And so, and I know pretty much just, uh, that's just one way to, like, um, handle rejection is by, and it's kind of, like, sounds counterintuitive by doing more of it. Yeah. By getting rejected more. It sounds counterintuitive, but uh, I know that's one way, you know, to handle it. And, and, and then at the same time, whatever it is that you're doing, just get getting better at your craft. Because I know if you're a better, like, salesman, I know the rejections tend to become less and less. Yeah. Like, if, if, for example, like, for um, relationships, I guess, like, if, if you tend to talk better to women, if you become better at it, the less rejection you'll get. And so, like, I know that's one way. It's just numbers. Yep. Um, doing more and more of it. And then uh, and then eventually you, um, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah, pretty much you, you'll get desensitized and, you know, you'll, you'll get better. And then, you know, the other was just getting better at the craft yep. uh, that you're doing. Uh what about mentally? Like, I know towards the beginning, like, oh, once you get better, you get, you, you know, you get used to it. But what yeah. about in the beginning? I, does I, it take a toll mentally? I think it does. But I think one of the things that I've seen that has helped is just by trying not to think. Because I, I know, like, a mm. lot of people tend to overthink. Yep. And so you just... Play scenarios in your head, huh? Yeah. Like, you just don't think about kind of, kind of like when we went to go, when we had our... Try to invite people to certain events. Like, oh, remember, businesses? You just... Don't think about it. You yep. just go and say, "Hey, can I talk to the owner?" Yep. Just don't think about it, because yep. the more you think about something, the more it becomes like this whole scenario in your head. Yep. So just don't think. Uh, that's one of the things that also does help. Just don't think. And I know it sounds like counter to like, oh, you know, you need to say this and then this, which you, you should, mm. which you do. But I think, like all these scenarios, all mm-hmm. the things that can happen, I think you just don't think about it. You just kind of like, um going like you just do it like yep. don't think about it uh, yep. don't ever think about it and i think that's one of the things that does help uh, you know as to why we yeah i think for myself uh i i think that's a good one don't think just actually do it kind of like because mm. if you do think you're gonna blow it out of proportion yep. you're gonna make a team a bigger test than it actually is and then for myself one thing that i found that's helped me you know back then and even to this day right now it's mm-hmm. just saying the word it is what it is mm-hmm time is going to move on it's going to happen uh you know like the thing that you have to do whether you do it or not it you know time is going to continue moving on so might as well just do it like mm-hmm. it's not going to be so bad like you're going to have to do it so even if you mess up even if you get those notes even if your feelings get hurt it is what it is life is going to move on so might as well just do it and actually mm-hmm. like get it done because you're going to feel like a lot better once you get it done mm-hmm. even after you get those rejections you're like fuck i find at least i did it yeah like at least now I know that it happened, or now at least now I know that it didn't happen. Yeah, but I, I don't know why I thought it, and I I think it's dumb to think it. But I, I, I'm like, you know how you, people say like, what's the worst that can happen? Like, but I'm like, I think you could die, because like you know how like when you door to door, like people have gotten shot. Yeah. And so I'm like, nah, but I don't know if you want to include that. But I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, there's some, there's worse things that can happen. But uh, I mean, I think the overall concept is just. Um, you know doing it like like, yep. like you say it, it is you know it like you said it is what it is like uh but at the same time like that mentality for at least in my opinion it's not always the best but at least for that scenario i think it is like it is what it is oh yeah when we're going into the context of if you're yeah. becoming a door-to-door like you yeah. want something you know you yeah. need to talk to people like it you know i'm gonna get that no yeah. either i'm gonna get the yes or the no but like the outcome is gonna be yes or no yeah and so and so there's really nothing you can do about it and so like it doesn't uh it's not helpful to just you know keep thinking about it just you yep. know like you said like you you had to go to the next door yeah you know so and then pretty much as you more you do like whatever happened you know you'll probably still remember because i'm pretty sure there's still instances that you remember yeah that uh, are cringe <laughs> that are cringe but you know what it, it, nothing happened no you're still here um you probably you know think about it or when you're reminded yeah but it happened. Yep. Time moved on. You, they yep. moved on. You moved on. And so it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, looking back, uh, like how you mentioned, like, I, I did get better. Because I remember mm. um, when I left, I was I was the number one salesman in that office. Like, mm. beating the years from experience. So, I was selling uh, two vacuums a day. Mm. I did leave, like, uh, the middle of the month. But I was the top salesman when I left. Mm. And I think it came from experience and, you know, them wanting to help me. Because uh, I really did want to push for it. Mm-hmm. like in the beginning i'm like fuck man i would like i think i don't even think i got one sale the first month mm-hmm. and then like i started getting better I, i'm like okay it's part of it. it's gonna be a rejection like i mean it is what it is let me just get through it let me get through it right away those rejections like l- let's just get it over with so then now like mm-hmm. what i'm going after which is you know like the sale mm-hmm. i know it sounds bad but 
it, it's just gonna happen so let, let's just go ahead and get over the rejections and yeah and then you start knowing how to deal with people mm -hmm. like uh even if they're like hinting towards no like you start being like okay you know kind of like how you say you get better at, at your craft and even like like let's let's say if it was you really first starting out mm -hmm. you would have for sure got that no but like you, yeah. you get better at your craft so like you start you know throwing the conversation in a different direction that's yeah. going to change the outcome so yeah just continue getting those notes and then i think you know that's pretty much how at least how you handle rejection and handle rejection it's just you know putting up those numbers and and at some point becoming desensitized to it uh which you know i don't think that should be the goal i think you should just do it and then you know the byproduct of that is just you know gonna get better it's gonna get better it's not gonna be you know, those notes are not gonna be as hard as harsh and then also getting better at your craft Yeah. Because then with that, there's going to be less rejections. Yep. So it's kind of like a, I, I don't know if it's called a flywheel. It's like, you know, but like the more you do it, you know, the less it, you know, the, the rejections you feel, the, the more you get better and the yep. less rejections you have. So it's kind of like yep. a, a snowball effect. There yep. we go. A snowball effect that, yeah. uh, that you know, is going to become a lot better. Yeah, because you're still going to get rejection. The best, the best salesmen in the world still get no's. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, part of life. How you mentioned like you're not gonna straight up be like hey you know you, you want to be my boyfriend girlfriend or you want to be my friend yeah but like from time it's like you know i don't want to hang out with you anymore you're gonna mm -hmm. get those people mm -hmm. that for whatever reason they don't mm -hmm. want to be with you anymore don't like you or whatever it's still gonna happen i think that's a part of life and it's just a part of living mm -hmm. and uh yeah i think the sooner you get used to those no's to used to those rejections once you tell yourself that you know that's just a part of life i think the easier it is It is gonna get once you mm -hmm. actually get those notes. No, but uh, pretty much I think that that, that sums it up. Is um, you know just doing more of it, uh, and then you know by as a byproduct you'll get better, and so like and, and by th with that you'll get less rejections, and so it's like a snowball effect, and so uh, that's pretty much how we handle rejection, and um, yeah, there's really not much more to it. Just go ahead and go and do it. Don't overthink things. Yep, and just do it. Um, but yeah, um, that pretty much sums it up. Um, hopefully this was a helpful one because I know a lot of people are scared of rejection. Yep. And so if you have any comments regarding what we talked about or, or in general, uh, please make sure to leave it in the comments down below. And so with that being said, this was another episode of Driven. My name is Juan. My name is Alexis. And we'll see you on the next one.